How's it going everybody? If you've clicked on this video, there's a pretty high chance that you've been working on a project, a remodel, and everything's been going smoothly until you get to the point of installing the trim and you realize it's a little bit more difficult than it seems with all the angles and corners coming together not looking quite right. So here you are. And don't worry, this video is about showing you the basics of trim installation from baseboards to crown molding and hopefully I can get you started in the right direction to make it look exactly as good as you want it to. Installing trim can be really difficult. Sometimes you're working with a simple corner, but sometimes you're dealing with a corner that has an odd angle and a slope from the roof and getting all these pieces to match up is really difficult if you don't use just the right methods. But you can make just about anything easier if you break it down into a few simple steps. So let's jump in and see what what we got going on here. So here we are in my sister's house where she's been doing some remodeling and it's time to put in the baseboards. All we're dealing with here are simple 90 degree corners so we're gonna start with the simplest method possible. Using the first method is super easy. All we have to do here is cut both pieces at a 45 degree angle so that they match up against each other completing a 90 degree angle in the corner. First we'll measure the length of the two wall sections without compensating for the thickness of the trim and then we can cut the trim to that measurement. But there are two different ways to go about it. You can cut each section to length and then cut the ends at the correct angle, but if you do it that way, it is pretty easy to accidentally cut off too much and mess up your measurement. So what I do is I make a mark exactly how long the length needs to be, and I cut it at a 45 degree angle from there. Just keep in mind that whatever method you use, the long side of the trim needs to be the back side that's going to go against the wall. If you cut the pieces right, you should be able to match them neatly in the corner with the angled ends butting up against each other and all you have to do is tack the trim into place with some finishing nails and call it a day. Alright, so that's the simplest method and it works just fine if you're in a hurry, but it definitely has its drawbacks. When it comes down to standard construction, most of the walls don't actually end up being perfect angles. So even if you get your cuts perfectly right, they still won't match up together once they're nailed up to the wall because the wall itself is the thing that has a bad angle. So if you want it to look a little better, what are you supposed to do about that? Well, that's where we go to method number two. Here's where we really start coping with the difficulties of trim installation. Literally, we're going to use a method called coping to cut these things out like a puzzle piece so that they fit nicely together in the corners with barely any gap. We're going to start just like we did before, measuring and cutting our two pieces of trim, but right off the bat, things get a little more difficult. You need to pick one of the pieces to be clean cut to length at just a normal 90 degree angle, and the other piece will be cut to fit it. To pick which piece will be which, I usually stand at the opening of the room I'm working on and pick the walls that I'm facing directly to have the clean cut pieces and the side walls will have the coped pieces. That way, if I mess up a little and the cut isn't super clean, it won't be directly in view when I walk in the room. So, once we've decided which piece will be which, you go ahead and cut the plain cut piece to the correct measurement at just a standard 90 degree angle and tack it into place. Now we move on to the other piece and begin the coping method. Just like in the first method, we start by cutting the piece of trim to length at a 45 degree angle so that the long side of the trim is the side that faces the wall. Now, if we were to try to put that piece up against the plain cut piece, it obviously won't mesh, so we need to remove all the excess material that extends past the profile of the trim. You could technically do this by hand by using a special kind of saw called a coping saw that has a tiny little blade. But to get a more precise cut, I use a rotary tool with a milling tip and it especially helps when I'm dealing with a piece of trim that has little curves and details. So I use this rotary tool to cut away the excess material and here's a side-by-side -side comparison of what it's supposed to look like versus whenever you still have a little left to cut off. Once you get it right, you can slide it neatly into the corner and it should fit just like a little puzzle piece and you can tack everything in place. So using the coping method definitely takes a lot more time and effort, but it easily compensates for any walls that are not at perfect angles, as well as making sure that there's no big noticeable gap. Now given the high level of difficulty, you're probably going to want to practice a little bit before going to the main big pieces. But given that you're going to be cutting these big main pieces out of 12, 10, or 8 foot boards, you should have plenty of extra spare little short pieces that you can practice on before going into the big main ones, and that way you don't end up wasting a whole bunch of money by ruining good trim. 
Speaking of saving money, there are definitely a few ways to go about it, and with trim being so expensive, it's really worthwhile. One way that you can go about saving money on trim is if you're remodeling multiple rooms at the same time, you take the big room and repurpose that old trim by cutting it down to size for any room that's smaller. But alternatively, you could also do what she did. So in my case, with the new baby, saving money was definitely top priority. So I decided to reuse the old trim and just give it a facelift. So here's how I did that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is remove any caulk left over on the trim. I used a 14-in-1 painter's tool. Just be careful not to cut into the trim. I did this a few times when I first started working with trim, so just a warning. Next, wipe down the trim to remove any dirt and grime buildup. I grabbed a bench in the background to help save my back. Here's a shot of the trim after wiping it down to show all the nail holes that need filling. Next we can use wood filler or spackle to fill any nail holes or imperfections. I use fast and final lightweight spackling. I noticed on this spackle container they recommended using a wet putty knife for a smoother finish, so I gave it a try and it worked quite nicely. Once that dries we can sand everything down. I like to use a piece of sanding paper wrapped around an old sanding sponge. I used 120 grit here. Now that everything is sanded down, we'll dust the trim off and then we're ready for my favorite part, fresh paint. I usually do three coats when working with white paint for the best results, but in this case I only needed to do two coats since it was white to begin with. I used a cabinet grade roller to get a nice smooth finish and you can see how I used the end of it to paint in the detailed parts of the trim. I forgot to record it, but I used sanding blocks to raise the trim to different heights to make painting easier. That way ideally you would start with the highest piece and paint down from there to avoid dropping paint on your freshly painted trim. Finally, we're ready to reattach the trim. Alright, so things have been pretty simple so far. We've just been dealing with baseboards with a 90 degree corner, so you just have to cut the pieces at 45 degree angles and decide whether you want to do coping or not. But how are you supposed to deal with the corners that have more complicated angles whenever you're installing crown molding, the trim that goes on the ceiling? Here we are in my mobile home, so I can show you some examples of how difficult it can be to install crown molding. You see, not only are we dealing with the 90 degree angles of these two walls coming together, but we're also dealing with the roof coming down at about a 15 degree angle. So if we were to try to use the simplest method where you just cut the angles and try to mash them together, well, not only would we be dealing with the bad angle of the 90 degrees, but we're also dealing with the unknown angle of the roof coming down. So with all of that put together, it would be nearly impossible to make this corner look really good without there being a massive gap. So in this case, we're going to be using the third method, which is definitely intimidating, but it's just a combination of the first two methods, so don't worry too much. We'll hop right into it, and you'll see it's actually not as hard as you might think. Just like before, you want to cut your trim to the right measurements and choose which wall will have the plain cut piece versus which piece we'll be working on. You could decide just based off of what you'll be able to see from the most common view, and that might still be worth it if you're not confident at making a clean cut, but as you'll see, it's a lot easier to make the slanted ceiling piece the simple cut and then cope the wall piece to fit it. Now, there is still a little bit of difficulty cutting that ceiling piece because you're not entirely sure what angle the ceiling meets the wall at. The way I usually work around this is by taking a scrap piece of trim and cutting it at a 45 degree angle. Then I trim down little by little, mainly just eyeballing it, until I get it to fit flush just the way I want it to, to where the ceiling piece meets nice against the wall. Regardless of what angle you come up with, once you have that test piece, use it as a template, and all you have to do is trace it onto the other pieces and you'll get a consistent angle across the board. 
you don't have to worry too much about getting these cuts exactly right because as long as they're close enough, the wall piece will be covering that edge so you won't be able to see the little bit of a gap between the piece and the wall. Once you have the ceiling piece tacked into place, the wall piece is the easy part because you're just doing the same exact thing from method 2. You cut the piece at a 45 degree angle, making sure that the long side is the wall side, and then you remove all the excess material forward of the profile outline. If you take your time and do it right, everything should turn out looking great in the end with a nice smooth corner. So, getting a ceiling corner to look nice and tidy is pretty difficult, but if you apply these methods and practice on a few scrap pieces of trim, you should have it down before too long. Add to that a little bit of tweaking and fine tuning to make everything fit just right and you should be good to go. If you apply all the methods that you learned in this video, you should know all the basics that you need to put in whatever baseboards or crown molding that you like, and everything should be okay. There are obviously easier ways to do it, and some trim is easier to install than others. If you're installing clean white trim like you saw earlier in the videos, then you don't even need to use any of these methods, you just cut the basic angles and then you can use caulk to fill in the gaps. But if you're wanting to go with something a little more fancy that's already pre-faced, then you're going to have to be really careful with these cuts to make sure that they line up just right, because otherwise that gap will really stick out. And last but not least, if you're working with trim like this, which is just basic hardwood trim, then you're going to be doing some sanding and finishing anyway, so that will help blend together those corners and make them look that much better. But regardless of what kind of trim you're working with, I'm hoping this video helped you learn the basic techniques and got you started in the right direction so you can make everything look exactly how you want it because that's the joy of remodeling, taking something and making it your own. But that about does it for this video. If you like it, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the description below. And other than that, stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.